There's something about the Star Wars Andor series that keeps me locked in. It wasn't a series I was particularly interested in when it was announced, but I'm glad I gave it a chance. It has quickly become my favorite Star Wars series to date, but what makes it so great? Well, there's several things. The acting, the directing, the real world feel, and of course the rich characters all play a part. And let's not forget how dark the show portrays the Empire to be. Finally. Star Wars to me had always been eye-catching because of the fancy stuff we don't see in our own world. A kind of escape into Jedi, Sith, Mandalorians, and so on and so forth. But the new characters introduced in the Andor series are none of those things that we know of. And I hope it stays that way in Andor Season 2. Why? Because this show doesn't need any of that to be a solid Star Wars series. Yes, it feels weird saying that. One of the rich new characters we have been introduced to is Dedra Moreau, the up-and-coming ISB supervisor who can't seem to lose that scowl of anger from her face. But even with Dedra's constant frown, we can't help but think this is an amazing character. Now, I'm not going to speculate whether she is Cassian Andor's sister or another internal mole for the Rebellion or anything like that, because none of that is likely true or even matters. She has blue eyes. Cassian Andor's sister had brown eyes. That's the biggest giveaway. But I am going to take a deeper look at her character of what we know about Dedra Moreau so far from Andor Season 1. But before we get into it, I've noticed a lot of you watch my videos but haven't yet subscribed. If you're enjoying my Star Wars content, then what are you waiting for? Subscribing really helps my channel in so many ways. So if you haven't done so, go on and hit the subscribe button and help this channel grow to new heights. All of you are appreciated so much more than you have any idea of. And soon I will be breaking away from the Andor stuff and getting back to more of the galaxy far, far away. Let's get on with the topic. You've waited long enough. Dedra Miro quickly proves she isn't the typical Imperial officer we have seen on screen. Ruthless and resourceful, she gets what she's after. From the moment we see her take authority on Ferrix from her colleague, Supervisor Blevin, she tells her theory that the seemingly random insurgencies are actually coordinated rebel attacks, and there's one man who can link all of them, Cassian Andor. Hunting the one known only as Axis, Dedra Miro has a hunch that the capture of Cassie Nandor can lead them to the Rebel Coordinator. At first, Dedra is told just to do the job she was assigned to, but eventually she convinces Major Partagas that she is onto something. But little did she know that Cassian was already in an Imperial prison facility on Narkina 5, under an alias. The embarrassment of the Primor security team on Ferrix led Dedra to someone who may be able to help her, Cyril Karn. Cyril Karn was the man responsible for the failure on Ferrix when he and his team attempted to capture at Cassian Andor for the murder of two Primor officers. Dedra believed Cyril Karn saw Cassian and possibly the one known as Axis, so it was time to bring Cyril Karn in for questioning. Cyril was more than cooperative. He gave every bit of information he had, and then some. He offered his own assistance in the matter and told her he could be a huge asset. Dedra told Cyril that he would stop pursuing Cassian Andor immediately. She also told him that his assistance wouldn't be necessary moving forward and to return to his mundane life and his mundane job. When Cyril returned to work, his boss told him that he had been promoted thanks to Dedra Miro. Cyril then waited for Dedra outside the ISB headquarters. When she appeared, Cyril approached her to give her his thanks, also reiterating how dangerous Cassian Andor is. She threatened him to be in big trouble if he didn't leave her alone, and both went their separate ways. When Dedra learned of Cassian Andor's mother passing, she set a trap for him. The Grievers would be permitted to hold a funeral for the beloved daughter of Ferrix, and the ISB would watch and wait for Cassian to show up. When the funeral turned into an uprising, Dedra Miro was assaulted. She would have been captured or killed if it weren't for Cyril Karn showing up to save her. But this isn't the first trap Dedra Miro and the ISB had set up. There was the trap laid for Anto Krieger, and one of the contacts for Axis, Luthen Rael. Within the rebel community, that is. Although the trap for Anto Krieger seemed like a success, it was actually another failure. Let's look at the record of the ISB when it comes to finding Cassian Andor and Luthen Rael. 
Yes, the pre-war arrest of Cassie and Andor turned out to be a failure. I know this wasn't an ISB action, and the pre-war security force is only loosely affiliated with the Empire. But it shows the first instance that catching Cassie and Andor would prove more difficult than a simple arrest warrant. Then there was the trap set for Anto Krieger by Dedra Moreau and the other ISB supervisors. Dedra lost the argument in this case, as Lonnie Jung proposed that the Empire should act natural as to not raise suspicions. Dedra wanted to go in guns blazing. But when the trap was sprung, everyone on Anto Krieger's team was killed, including Krieger. Sounds like a win. But no. The ideal situation would have been to capture Krieger alive. Torturing him would reveal Luthen Rail as the rebel coordinator, now that chance was lost. Then we have the funeral of Marva Andor. With the Imperial presence and occupation of Ferrix, the deceased had decided that it was better to fight than lay down and allow the Empire to flourish in their homes. This incited a revolution which ended badly for Dedra Miro and the rest of the Empire on the planet. They didn't even see Cassian Andor slip in and out, coming in alone and leaving with Luthen Rail after getting his friends off-world. So it turns out that Dedra Miro failed even greater in her takeover of the Ferrix problem than the Primor had, along with Cyril Karn. The security team was a small detail that was only there to serve an arrest warrant. Cassian escaped with Luthen, but they hadn't at least been able to identify Cassian. Dedra had no clue that Cassian was even on Ferrix, other than an informant saying he saw Cassian. That informant died in the uprising, so no further information could be gained. Now, with Cassian and Luthen preparing to leave the planet, Anto Krieger dead, and those who knew Cassian best were gone, Dedra Miro and the Empire are back to square one. Had Dedra Miro just checked the recent arrests in the Imperial database, she would have seen his face, or at least someone would have. Yes, the galaxy is huge, and there are thousands of arrests being made every day, but it was also a failure on the part that the whole of the Empire judicial system should have been on the lookout. Communication seems to be lacking in that department. As far as the character of Dedra Miro, she made us fear the Empire. Where the Death Star was the biggest threat the Empire had during the original trilogy, Dedra shows us that individuals in the Empire can be even worse, employing slave labor, mistreatment of prisoners, and torture methods that are downright inhumane make us see what the totalitarian regime was all about. And that scares us. People are capable of horrendous acts when given enough power. Joseph Mengele, anyone? In the past, we saw the Imperial officers as a bunch of pompous opportunists that wanted to end the rebellion so they could get back to sipping tea and fighting among themselves for the Emperor's favor. But Dedra Moreau is pure evil. Although we kind of like the character, she is an antagonist, or more appropriately, a villain. As evil as Dedra is, she still holds the ideals we have come to see with other Imperial officers. She's not only idealistic, but she's also an opportunist, undermining her own colleagues to get the job that she feels she's entitled to. I know a lot of the theme of Andor series is sacrifice, but in her case, I don't care what she sacrificed. Honestly, I hope she sacrifices everything and ends up being tortured in the same manner as she tortured Bix Kaleen but maybe I should leave my feelings out of it. This isn't about my reaction, so I'm sorry for that. My thoughts aside, Dedra Miro is a very interesting character. She has shown us why the Empire should be feared. Before her character appeared and before the Andor series was released, there could be a small case made for some citizens being able to see the Empire as saviors, bringing order to the galaxy and providing a certain amount of stability. But now, no. The Empire is full of people like Dedra Miro and Supervisor Blevin, Imperial officers whose only sacrifice is their humanity. There are too many supporters of the evil regime in the Senate, and that makes it nearly impossible to remove the Emperor and his fascist tactics. Thanks to Tony Gilroy for showing us an even darker side of the Empire, one that we haven't seen since the writings of the Expanded Universe. We can now say that the Rebellion is necessary. This is a much darker empire than we have seen in the past, and Dedra Moreau exemplifies that evil. 
In shows like Star Wars Rebels, we even see the Imperial officers as being comical and quite satirical. But in the Cassian Andor series, that has changed to what the Empire should have been shown as all along. But here's a tip for Dedra Miro. Wipe that frown off your face or the Rebel Alliance will do it for you. I know this went into a rant, but I think it's necessary to show that we may have a tiny bit of empathy for Dedra Miro. And some may even be rooting for her. And that's one aspect that makes the writing of the Andor series so amazing. If you think I missed something about the character of Dedra Miro, please leave it in the comments. Let's talk about it. I'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't done so yet, go on and hit that subscribe button on your way out. I have one more character analysis to do before I leave the Andor series alone for a bit. And that's the character known as Nemec, the rebel conspirator on Aldani who creates the manifesto. You won't want to miss that one. This is Gerald, a Star Wars fanatic, signing off, wishing you all great health, happiness, and peace. Be good to each other. Thank you all for watching, and remember, this is the way. And positivity in the Star Wars community is the only way.